it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. I am going to be creating a boxed frame on the front of my card today and this is a technique that you can use in so many different ways. So we are going to start off today by showing you the dimensions. I am going to be using a 5x5 five five inch side folding uh, card base but you could also have it top folding so that it goes like this too. And then I have a 5.5x5.5 five and five five and inch piece of cardstock here. These are both made out of the 110 pound Recollections style paper. Now to our single piece of 55 by 55 you are going to score this at a quarter inch and then a half inch. So basically just go a quarter inch in and score it and then a quarter inch further and score it again. Turn it around clockwise and then do those two score lines. Turn it around clockwise again so that you have it on all four sides. This is an unbelievably easy box style frame. And you can see there if I kind of just uh, use my hand to shadow it a little bit, you can see that um, scoring that is down the sides. And then this just gives us a perfect guideline for how to cut out so that we leave the little flaps. So I do two cuts all the way in and then one cut on the outside all the way in and then one cut where we just want to leave that tiny little tab there. And that is going to help us pop our box together. Now I chose a quarter of an inch because I don't like my box uh, frames to pop up too far off my card. This is going to be a hand delivered card so that I know it's not going to go through the mail and perhaps these wouldn't be great cards to go through the mail unless you used a really padded or sturdy envelope to kind of know that it was going to be protected. But now I'm just going to kind of fold over all of these score lines and make sure that they are really nicely scored and are ready to go for when we pop the box together. But I'm going to do a few bits and pieces before we end up putting the box together. Now I'm actually going to create a couple of these cards and this is I think going to end up being a two part video because uh, this one is long enough for one part. I like to keep my videos on the shorter end and this one will already be a bit longer than normal. I have a die that is going to go here just to cut out a frame for the center which we will uh, look into. Again you can do this in so many different ways and just use this really simple box uh, frame design in so many amazing ways. So I'm going to show you a couple of them. And I have run this through my die cutting machine. Obviously we want to do this whilst the box frame is still nice and flat. I used some mint tape to hold it down and then this one has stitching on the outside. So that leaves a really nice little bit of detail there. Now I'm going to move on and be inking up some vellum to create kind of a patterned vellum. For this I'm just going to use the lawn fawn vellum that I use for pretty much everything in my card making. I'm going to use a layering stencil technique here where I'm going to layer up the smaller diamonds on top of the larger diamonds. I'm using some Midnight Snack and Remember Me dye ink. These happen to be the Simon Hurley ones and this is two different shades of blue obviously. Here are the finger dobbers that I have labelled that I use with these. I'm really sorry that this set has been discontinued by scrapbook.com but it was such a good set for finger dobbers and they all stacked nicely into that little container but I apologise. I know that they've been discontinued because I've been talking to them about it. Um, so all I'm doing here, very, very simple. I'm just going to use my finger dobbers and I've got my larger of the two diamond stencils and I've just got a piece. I don't even know how big this piece of vellum is. I think I end up cutting it down perhaps. Um, it was just big enough that I knew I would leave myself some room and I'm just holding the stencil down but perhaps it would be better if I had added a little bit of low tack tape as well because I shifted it around a couple of times here but it doesn't matter. Now you don't have to create your own vellum obviously, you could just use some, you could even emboss some vellum, dry emboss it, uh, you could use some heat embossing on some vellum, that would look really nice, uh, lots of different options instead of using ink um, to create a piece here. And then in the second card uh, that I show you I'm also going to leave the box frame open and we're going to make it a whole lot more intense and awesome and gorgeous but today's one is Kind of a really simplified version. Um, I enjoyed making it but it's definitely the simpler of the two and much easier and quicker to create. And if you had something already on hand you would be able to skip this step here of inking up the vellum and everything um, so that would make it even quicker. 
Now I am just shifting my stencil around to get the very bit that I want for my diamonds. You can see I've put the smaller diamonds on top of the larger diamond stencil. I did use some tape to hold that in place finally once I got sick of it shifting. And then you can see the nice pattern it leaves here. But I'm actually going to fill in the inside diamonds as well. So all I have to do is shift my stencil around and I'm able to line it back up so that I have the gaps there now. And again, I'm just going to use that Midnight Snack color, so the same color that I used um, to create the smaller diamonds. And then that way I am just going to fill in the gaps and the vellum looks a little more complete and a little more covered. But honestly, any couple of stencils, I've got lots of videos on my channel about layering up a couple of different stencils. And just getting more from them really, using the same stencils that you already have in your stash, but being able to use them in a couple of different ways. So I am going to make sure that this whole little square is pretty much covered because I know that I don't have too much vellum to spare and it doesn't have to be perfect. But that is my piece and I'm pretty happy with that. This is the inked side here and then this is the reverse side. Now the reverse side is what it's going to be facing up when I do my creation. So here is the box frame to go on the card and I haven't done anything else to it. It's exactly as it was before. And I'm sure you could use liquid glue, but honestly, I find it kind of easier to use double-sided tape for this. I have a couple of different widths depending on um, what width you have chosen. Now, the quarter inch, the first quarter inch that we scored is how deep the card is going to be. So how far it kind of comes up off your card front. And then the outside score line that we created is the one that is going to kind of sit underneath and attach it to our card front, if that makes sense. Now I just wanted a little bit of color on the sides here because again I'm keeping a lot of this white so I'm going to use the Remember Me color which we used um, in the inking as well so the same one from Simon Hurley and I'm just using a little bit of low tech tape this is the mint tape from scrapbook.com and I'm just adding a kind of lightish layer to the sides there. I'm honestly not worried if my blending isn't perfect um, I don't think anybody's going to notice and as I said you kind of this is what you're going to see from the side of the card. It's not going to be what you're easily able to see from the front. So I'm just adding on some ink kind of quickly and reusing that piece of low tech tape over and over again so that I can get a nice crisp line where it's going to fold over and become the crease line. Again, this is completely optional. And if you're not keen on inking, what you could do is just cut thin strips of colored cardstock and glue those on there if you wanted to. I am using some permanent adhesive uh, roller here and just so that I can add my vellum down you could also use some double sided tape that would work perfectly too to go all around my die cut frame there and then I'm going to pop this down so that the inked side is down at the moment. So I'm just kind of turning this around figuring out where I want the diamonds to go but in the end I pretty much decide just to go up and down. Um, but So the inked side of this is down and the reverse side is facing up. Now, as I said at the beginning, this is actually quite a simple card to put together. There is nothing too complex about it, and you're just putting together a very simple box. So now we have our front all covered, we have our score lines in, we have our adhesive on there, and I'm going to use some liquid glue for this part, and I'm just going to put a tiny little bit on the tab there that we left, and then this just bends under like any other box, and I'm just going to hold it there for a little second just because it's liquid glue. Obviously, you can use um, some double sided tape or some tape runner that would work perfectly fine and you wouldn't have to hold it but it was just what I had sitting right there so I just decided to use the liquid glue either is absolutely fine as long as you have a nice strong glue and make sure that all of your folds are kind of done at this point so that you aren't fighting that as well when you're trying to create your box if you end up creating one of these or you were inspired to make one of these box frame cards, I would love to see them and the easiest place to do that is over on my Facebook group. We have a very supportive uh, and amazing, amazing group of people over there who also enjoy card making and we all have common interests. So you can find that on Facebook. It's called Come Crafting with Natasha. Or I will leave a link down in the description box below and you will be able to uh, just click on that and it will take you through to the group. Now here is where I kind of pull back just a little bit of the double sided tape. I take it off and I just kind of hold my finger underneath the corners there. And again, this just secures the box a little bit more. It's actually easier if I just get my bone folder and kind of pull it up under there so that the adhesive sticks together. This is not um, necessary at all. It just makes sure that your box is in really good shape before you pop it down onto your card base. 
So the box is all ready to go. I've mo removed the adhesive strips, the backing to it. And so you can just figure out which way you want to pop it down. And then it's going to go straight in the middle of my five by five inch card base. And then I do just kind of make sure to give it a really solid press so that all of that uh, double sided tape adheres nicely. And then you can see that it just pops off the card front really nice. Not too much, as I said, this one is going to be hand delivered, but enough to kind of be something a little bit different and a little bit cool. So to finish this off, we are going to keep it very, very simple. And I actually did a similar design a few cards ago. This is a stamp set I've been enjoying called One Liners, and this is a woodware stamp set. It is photopolymer, and it is really good quality. I'm going to stamp it using some VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, which stamps really nice and crisp. And you want a nice crisp ink. Probably something like Distress Oxides or Distress Inks wouldn't be good for stamping this because... The, they don't tend to stamp quite as uh, crisp as something like a VersaFine Clear Ink or the VersaFine Onyx Black. I am going to stamp out a couple of these because usually I jinx myself and if I only stamp out one I will end up ruining it when I cut it. So this is a little something just for you and obviously it stamps the black around the outside and then it leaves the inside white. It almost like looks like you've done some matte uh, white heat embossing. So it feels like a little cheat to me, a little life hack and so that I get the kind of look that I'm after without having to get out my embossing powders. Then I have this little heart that I have die cut out and this is going to go straight in the center. I don't want to cover up too much of my background that I have created, but I do want to kind of make sure that the sentiment stands out. And you could put this right across the middle like here, but I'm going to cut this and make it in two. I am going to use a little bit of foam tape on the back of this. These are the scrapbook.com foam strips, which I am really enjoying using at the moment. And don't get me wrong, the card already has plenty of dimension, but why not go for gold because I know this one is going to be hand delivered. I'm going to pop the sentiment right in the middle of the little heart there and it says a little something just for you. This is actually going to a, um, a new mama. She's just had her first baby and I have just put together a pack for her just specifically for her. I've got some other little bits and pieces and a little parcel for the baby, but this one is just for the mama. And then just to jazz this up a tiny little bit, I do have some blue pearls, which I'm going to pop on as well. These are adhesive backs, so they already have the adhesive on the back. But you could use some enamel dots, you could use some Nouveau drops, some color pops. Um, you could use anything that you have to kind of create this extra little bit. You could use some die cuts around the outside. There are so many different options that you can go with this card. So I just wanted to keep it kind of nice and simple, but I wanted it to be a really enjoyable little card. As I said, this is going to be part one of two. And the next one is already filmed so I just need to do some editing and then I will have that one uh, probably will come up a couple of days after this card goes live as well. I will leave links to everything that I can still find uh, for the products that I have used in this video. I will leave them in the description box below so if there's something you see in the video and you like the look of it then make sure you always check down below. I list everything that I can find um, so that you guys can check it out if you would like to. But other than that, I hope that you enjoyed creating a box frame with me and I really look forward to seeing you in part two. So I will see you then. Thanks. Bye.